This video is supported by Brilliant. I've talked often on this channel about how humans are pattern seekers. We excel at it, because if we can understand a pattern, it gives us comfort, a sense of purpose in the world. We actually do excel at critical thinking and reasoning, despite, you know, everything we've seen this last year. But sometimes we work ourselves into a corner on something and come to a conclusion that doesn't make sense, except it does. Paradoxes and thought experiments are kind of like the dark side of our superpower of reasoning. These aren't meant to be taken too seriously, but they can kind of give us a new perspective on our beliefs and show that the world is a lot weirder than we think it is. So let's jump off the deep end together, shall we? All right, so let's loosen up our brains and dive into some of the weirdest paradoxes and thought experiments that have been tying our brains into knots for years now, and even millennia. Starting with the old classic, the trolley problem. For anyone who hasn't heard of the trolley problem, it goes like this. Imagine being a trolley driver and the brakes stop working. You're going downhill and you can't stop, and up ahead of you is a switch on the tracks. And beyond that switch, there are five people tied to the tracks who would be killed if you kept going in that direction. But on the other track is one person tied to the track, and you have to choose. Do you keep going down your current track and kill five people, or do you switch tracks and kill the one person? Sounds kind of obvious. Killing one person is obviously not as bad as killing five people, but if you choose to switch the tracks, then you are choosing to kill that person. You are sentencing that person to death, whereas if you just continued on your current track, you're sort of absolved of guilt because that was the track that you were on anyway. Of course, once switching became an option, you're still making a choice, even if you choose to do nothing. So those five people are still on you. So, what do you do? What do you do? English philosopher Philippa Foote created this problem in 1967, although it was Judith Thompson from MIT who coined the term trolley problem. Thompson's also responsible for a different version of this, where the person on the trolley could stop the trolley from hitting people by throwing a fat person in front of it. Why a fat person? I don't know. There are also various versions of the trolley problem where that one person is somebody that you know or something like your wife or your mom or something like that. Anyway, what's the point of the trolley problem? Besides being the inspiration for plot devices in shows like The Good Place and The Dark Knight, it makes you kind of examine your ethics and beliefs. You let five people die. If you believe that the best choice is the one that serves the greatest good for the greatest number of people, as like, you know, killing one person instead of five people, then you're aligned with utilitarianism. But if you believe that the act itself determines morality, then you're more aligned with deontological ethics. You can also think of it as determinism versus free will. It's that classic dilemma. And that's the point. You'll have to choose. Especially for Michael in The Good Place, who asked the question, how do you kill all six people? So I would dangle a sharp blade out the window to slice the neck of the guy on the other track as we smoosh our five main guys. There are more things in heaven and earth, Horatio, than are dreamt of in your philosophy. So says Hamlet in the play bearing his name, a play, by the way, that was written by a primate. Specifically, William Apespear, the bard of Ape Vaughn, who wrote some of the world's most ape-peeling plays. All right, enough monkey business. And yes, I know the difference between a monkey and an ape. Do you? Huh? Do you? Sorry for the apitude. The infinite monkey theorem is the idea that if you put a monkey in front of a typewriter and gave it an infinite amount of time hitting random keys, eventually it would pin the complete works of William Shakespeare. But I mean, come on, do we need another Taming of the Shrew? It's 2021, get woke, Bill. Apey way, since there's only a limited number of keys that are possible to hit given enough amount of time, every single permutation or combination of those letters will be typed. It was the best of times. It was the blurst of times, you stupid monkey. <laughs> this theorem touches on everything from evolution to probability to even multiverse theories. French mathematician Emile Borel first presented the idea in his 1913 paper, La Mécanique Statique de Reversibilité. Yeah, given an infinite amount of time, I might actually pronounce a French word correctly. And believe it or not, somebody actually tested this theory with an actual monkey and an actual typewriter. In 2003, some lecturers and students at the University of Plymouth Institute of Digital Arts and Technology in England placed a computer and keyboard in the Salawesi crested macaques enclosure at the Pangton Zoo. After a whole month, the six macaques produced nothing more than a few pages of nonsensical text. They spent most of their time defecating and urinating on the computer until it didn't work anymore. So they are basically just shitting all over the computer. In other words, they were writing The Taming of the Shrew. Oh! And since we can never talk enough about infinity, let's stick with that topic and explore Hilbert's paradox of the Grand Hotel. 
German mathematician David Hilbert devised this paradox in 1924, and it basically just plays with some of the absurdities around infinity. The idea is imagine a hotel with an infinite number of rooms, and all of those rooms are filled with guests. Now you might think that since all the rooms are occupied that you couldn't get any more guests in there, but this is an infinity hotel. So a new guest arrives and wants to book a room. Since there are infinitely many rooms, the hotel manager moves the guest in room one to room two, the guest in room two to room three, and so on. And the new guest just goes into room one. Simple so far. Okay, so now imagine if an infinite number of guests wanted to stay at this hotel. Same rule applies, just move one person to the next room, slide that person into the new room, so on and so forth. In general, the formula is room n to room 2n, so all the odd number rooms are now available for the free guests. All this is beside the fact that um, this is not how hotels work. Could you imagine if you had to move into a new room every time a new guest came into a hotel? Probably not great Yelp reviews for the Infinity Hotel. But just to go deeper though, what if an infinite number of buses arrived with an infinite number of people on each bus and all of them needed to get into the hotel? Well, Euclid showed in 300 BCE that there is an infinite number of prime numbers. Knowing this, the manager assigns every current guest the first prime number, which is two, raised to the power of their current room number. The manager then takes the passengers off the first bus and assigns the next prime number of three raised to the power of their seat numbers. The passengers on the second bus are assigned the next prime number of five raised to the power of their seat numbers. And this goes on until a manager accommodates all the infinite number of people on the infinite buses. And yes, there are some rooms that go unfilled because six is not a power of a prime number. Anyway, let's hope this hotel has infinite towels and the guests have infinite patience. All right, so these have all been fun and games so far. Let's talk about a thought experiment that may cause extreme existential torment. That is uh, kind of what we do here. This paradox is known as Rocco's Bacillus, and it first showed up on the Less Wrong discussion board online. The word bacillus is used because just hearing about this paradox could put your life at risk. A bacillus, by the way, is a, is a mythological creature with a deathly gaze or breath. It's named after a guy who went by the name of Rocco, one of the board members. He proposed this in 2010, and it goes like this. In the future, what if a malevolent AI superintelligence came into being and decided that it wanted to punish everybody who didn't help it come into existence? Meaning, if you know about the possibility of this happening and you don't step up and help this AI to come into existence, you're doomed. Of course, if you do help this AI come into existence, then you're dooming everybody else. Meaning, um, I have now cursed you. Because now that you know about this, if you don't help this AI come into existence, then, you know, it'll kill you to death. Yeah, sorry about that. Rocco based the thought experiment on something known as Coherent Extrapolated Volition, or CEV. CEV was created by the founder of Less Wrong, Eliza Yudkowsky, and uh, it kind of goes like this. It is, quote, an argument that it would not be sufficient to explicitly program what we think our desires and motivations are into an AI. Instead, we should find a way to program it in a way that it would act in our best interest, what we want it to do, and not what we tell it to do. I'll put a link down in the description if you want to know the full scope of CEV. By the way, Yudkowsky was not happy with what Rocco did to his idea. Uh, he called it stupid and basically banned anybody from talking about it for five years. You do not think in sufficient detail about super intelligences considering whether or not to blackmail you, Yudkowsky posted in all caps. That is the only possible thing which gives him a motive to follow through on the blackmail. So that escalated quickly. Kind of sounds like he's punishing people for not bringing his idea to life. He's the Basil. Many commenters pointed out that uh, an AI like Roko presented would have no actual motive to follow through on its threat. Basically, that once the AI already exists, it can't change the probability of it existing, so punishing all these people would just be a waste of resources. But do you really want to take that chance? Or is it better to, as the joke says, welcome your eventual AI overlords? Anyway, those are the four that I wanted to talk about here today. There's plenty others that I could have brought in here that deal with everything from game theory to ethics to infinity. In fact, there are a lot of them about infinity. I think it's just because the, the entire concept of infinity is just such a mind blow. Paradoxes and thought experiments around infinity really push you to, to re-examine what you think is true about reality and space and time. Like there are infinities going out into the vastness of space and there are infinities going down small, going down into you. Meaning, in a very real sense, you are an infinite being in an infinite universe. So talk about it down in the comments. What is your take on these thought experiments and paradoxes? What's your favorite one that maybe wasn't listed here? And if the concept of infinity breaks your brain the way it does mine, then of course, you've got to check out the Infinity course on Brilliant. Through 13 interactive quizzes and 120 exercises, you'll get a handle on concepts like cardinality, fractals, tessellations in hyperbolic space, and the mind-blowing Cantor's theorem. And if all that sounds like gibberish to you, don't worry. 
it'll make sense in time. And if just jumping in with one of the most difficult mathematical concepts known to man is too much to start with, you can always just start with a mathematics fundamentals course and work your way up from there. And that's what's so brilliant about Brilliant. They walk you through the basics and teach you through problem solving. So you know you've got a handle on it before you move up to the more difficult stuff. And since you're using your own reasoning superpower to learn it, it makes it easier to apply to other areas of your life. And they make it easy to make learning a habit. So you can do it on your mobile device or even offline. So whenever you're just like waiting for food or something, you can bang out a problem or two. And if you want to get a taste of what I'm talking about, they have free daily brain teasers and you can do the first section of any of their courses for free so you can see what they're all about. But if you do sign up for the premium subscription that gives you access to all their courses and you're one of the first 200 people to do so, you can get 20% off if you go to brilliant.org slash answers with Joe. It's just a great way to learn things and they've been adding all kinds of really cool stuff. It's a lot more interactive these days. It's kind of uh, a lot more story problem solving kind of stuff on there. So if you haven't checked it out in a while, definitely um, go do so. Anyway, brilliant.org slash answers with Joe. Links down below. Big thanks to Brilliant for supporting this video and a huge shout out to the Answer Files on Patreon and the channel members that are helping to support this financially and, and just making an awesome community and I love all you guys. We've got some new channel members I need to shout out real quick. We got me, the guy's name is me, uh, Thomas Mrakolowski, <laughs> Walter Staley, uh, Christian Baining, um, Dharma Hetherington, Pat Telmer, Andrew Carey, John Michael, David Miller, Sean Summer, and JR. Thank you guys so much. If you'd like to join them and get early access to videos and access to exclusive live streams, just hit the join button right down below. Please do like and share this video if you liked it. And if you want to learn more and see what else I got going on, Google thinks you might like this one. It's a good place to start. Uh, you can also check any of the others down there that might have my face on them. Uh, do go check them out. And if you like them and you want to see more, uh, I encourage you to subscribe. I come back with videos every Monday. All right, cool beans. That's it for now. You guys go out there, have an eye opening rest of the week. Stay safe and I'll see you next Monday. Love you guys. Take care.